I'm Nick Grove for Morningstar and today I'm joined by Managing Director of Research Strategy Anthony Sirhan who in a recent paper suggested that Australian retirees should perhaps rethink their withdrawal rates. Anthony, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. First off, Anthony, what is this 4% rule we hear so much about and where did this come from? Yeah, it's a great, great um, starting point. It's where we started really with this. And you have to go back 22 years. It came from an article put into the uh, Journal of Financial Planning in the US by William Benjamin, um, who really wanted to solve this question of, geez, I've got all these clients retiring. He was a financial mm. planner. How much can they actually draw down? So that's where it started. But I think as with anything, and we love things that can be simple, don't we? 4% sounds good. Mm. What we miss out on is some of the detail about where that rule came from. Sure. So first of all, it was a US study. So it was dealing, looking at uh, US returns, stocks 50%, bonds 50%, that sort of a portfolio. Uh, it was historic data mm. uh, that they were using, and two other really important points. One, the 4% is only used once. You use that to determine what you can spend in the first year of retirement, then that dollar amount is indexed to inflation. So that's the first thing uh, to understand. And secondly, uh, when he was doing this, he really was focusing on this idea of a safe withdrawal rate. So he was saying this 4% number is really the minimum you can look at over a 30-year period, assuming markets perform at some of their worst. So it's really locking in on that certainty idea. Mm. And uh, this, this 4% rule that he came up with, uh, given the way markets are today and given that we're in a completely different country, um, does this 4% rule still have any sort of application for Aussie retirees? Yeah, I think there was a number of things we wanted to do when we uh, looked at this work and tried to do it in, a, in an Australian context. The first thing was to address one of the practical practicalities of life, and that is there are fees. Mm. Now, whether you're paying somebody to manage your portfolio, whether you're paying an accountant, whether you're paying somebody to administer the portfolio, there are costs. So what we did, um, first of all, was introduce a, a fee of 1% per annum uh, into our analysis. And uh, secondly, we looked at the Australian returns as opposed to US returns. So if you do a similar thing, assume a 30-year period, uh, a 50% Australian shares, 50% Australian bond rates with the fee level, the 4% number drops to around 2.5%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. But if you want to take that a step further, which is what we did, and say, well, more realistically, let's think about projected returns mm. or what are returns likely to be taking into account where equity markets are today, mm. where interest rates are today, and also uh, a more diversified portfolio. Sure, that will, it's yep. still still 50% equities, but you've got mm. a mix of Australian and international assets in there. When you do that, if you still want to be you know, 99% certain, that withdrawal rate number comes out at around 2.9%. Uh, and if you're prepared to, say, lower your your uh, how certain you want to be to around 8%, the number comes up to 3.9%. So you still get that range there. So look, mm. in an Australian context, there are some definite things you've got to allow for. Mm, sure. And in your paper, Anthony, you talk about this concept of probability of success or the, the success rate. Mm -hmm. Can you just elaborate on this a bit? Yeah, look, I, and I think it's really important. It's a really important concept for, for people to get around. I guess one of the things we everybody maybe felt, um, felt a bit let down about during the financial crisis was this idea that, hang on, we always talk about what average annual returns are going to be. You didn't tell me you could get something like this. And probability of success is one way of starting to think about a range of returns. You think about it. We say over the next 20 years, we expect equity markets to do, say, whatever it is, 6% or X% mm. per annum. If you're saying, OK, I'm prepared to work with that, what you're saying is you're a pretty optimistic person. <laughs> sure. Because the reality is, with any expected return, it'll come true in 50% or it'll be, ex you know, you'll get that in 50% of the circumstances. So you're saying that those 50% are probably going to be some of the more favourable conditions. The reality is you can look at that range and you can play with um, different certainty levels. You say, look, maybe I'm happy at 50% or maybe I'm happy at 99%. I want to be dead certain that whatever I'm putting into here is going to come out or the reality is somewhere in between. 
And that's what this paper does. It shows you uh, a range of um, um, success or probability of success levels. And just finally, Anthony, given the findings from the paper, what do you think is the best course of action at the moment for Australian retirees? Okay, I think there's a, a few uh, key lessons there. First of all, look, equity markets, I think, are still going to provide reasonable returns against cash over the next 20, 30 years. Sure. But in our numbers, those projected returns are probably two percentage points lower than what they have been historically. Okay? So, you know, get used to this idea returns are going to be lower. You have some choices. You can spend less. Uh, you can save more. Or you can, you know, satisfy yourself with a lower level of prob probability. Our safe withdrawal rates, um, they're similar to what we've seen in the past, but they are lower. And importantly, these withdrawal rates will be even lower if, as uh, the data shows us, people keep living longer. That's the good news, isn't it? We're going to live longer? Well, maybe you've got to take that into account when you're thinking about uh, how much you're spending today. Uh, also, the other thing we noticed was the, min the safe sort of withdrawal rates we were coming out with are lower than the minimum required withdrawal rates from an allocated pension. Right. So a few things for people out there living off their allocated pension. You know, if they want more certainty about their, you know, their money um, lasting their lives, uh, you may need to save money outside of the allocated pension or, more importantly, uh, you, name, you may need to um, put aside some of your annual payments from your allocated pension to another investment that's going to be there and something you can draw upon. Yeah, sure. Uh, the other uh, other great thing out of this study, once again, it shows the benefits of diversification. So a good balanced portfolio. Make sure you have it. But the other thing that strikes you is, you know, uh, while simple rules are great, the reality is we're all different, and we need to look <laughs> at this stuff uh, one by one. And reviewing this, taking into account your own requirements and your own preferences, is still going to be the best way of um, working your way through retirement. Of course. Anthony, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you. I'm Nick Grove for Morningstar. Thanks for watching.